Yeah, and, and I want to show our viewers that picture, uh, that uh, what's going on in the well of the Senate. Look at this. Look at this, John King. Uh, you and I have covered Capitol Hill for a long time. A protester is sitting there on the Senate floor where normally the president of the Senate, the, it would happen to be the vice president uh, uh, just a little while ago. Uh, a protester is sitting there in the well of the U.S. Senate. John, who would have ever believed we would see anything like this? And there are, sadly, Wolf, some people who will find this funny or they'll say it's just a prank or they will say, look at this picture, nobody in this picture is getting hurt. And that's all true. Uh, but it is part of something that is bigger and that is dangerous and that simply, forgive me, uh, we are a nation of laws. That is what the Republican Party says that we are, a nation of laws, a nation of rules. And I, this gentleman has every right to his anger. If he's mad at the results of the election, he does not have the right to break the rules and to violate security protocols and to storm into the United States Senate Senate at a time when the vice president, the vice president-elect, and the other elected members of that body, and their staff, by the way, uh, we don't give them enough credit, the people who work in these environments who don't get enough credit for the risks they take and for the public service they give us. Uh, and so those, there are people who look at this who will say, this is funny, this is a prank, look at that, how did you get there? Uh, it's not funny. It is part of, uh, you can call it sedition, you can call it a protest well beyond the line. Uh, it's illegal. It's illegal is what it is, and it'll be interesting to find out uh, what happened after this photo was taken. Yeah, and just a little while ago, senators were there. They were debating, uh, uh, you know, the, the motions to try to do away with the democratically held election here in the United States, debating in the House, debating in the Senate. Uh, and all of a sudden, John, we're told all, there's not only a lockdown inside the U.S. Capitol, but all these senators, including the vice president of the United States, has been... Uh, they, they've been evacuated out of safety concerns. And so we are seeing in the final days, the final two weeks of the Trump presidency, more of disruption. Disruption has been a trademark of the Trump campaign and then the Trump presidency from day one. Uh, in the end, Wolf, Joe Biden will be inaugurated two weeks from today as president of the United States. I suspect once they calm this down, they will try to come back today to make a point. I know the Speaker of the House very much wants to do that. Come back today to make the point that they will not be disrupted. That will depend on how quickly you can get enough security in there to make it safe. But if they have to wait till tomorrow, imagine that. The Constitution and then the U.S. Code lays out that it will happen today. U.S. The federal law lays out it will happen today. It's part of our ritual, the celebration of American democracy. And yes, these Trump supporters at the president's encouragement have disrupted it. And I'm sure many of them uh, are quite happy with themselves for doing that. In the end, it's a disruption. It's a criminal act. Joe Biden will be inaugurated, and they'll get back to it as soon as they can. And, and Jake, uh, let's not forget what the president said just a couple hours ago at that rally uh, out on the ellipse here in Washington. He told all these individuals who had gathered, these supporters of his, you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength, and you have to be strong, as he encouraged them to march toward the U.S. Capitol. That's exactly what they've done. They've not only marched, but they're inside and they're endangering a lot of people right now. That's right, and in fact, we have on the phone right now Congressman uh, Mike Gallagher, he's a Republican from Wisconsin, a Trump supporter who has said that, uh, that it is the duty of members of Congress uh, to count uh, the electoral votes. Uh, Congressman Gallagher, uh, also a veteran, um, thanks so much for joining us. First of all, are you okay? Are you safe? Where are you? Uh, yes, we're hunkered down in our offices here. I'm not in the Capitol, um, but I mean, this is insane. I mean, I, I've, I, I've not seen anything like this until, since I deployed to Iraq in 2007 and 2008. I mean, this is America, and this is what's happening right now. We need, the president needs to call it off. Like, call it off. Call it off. It's over. The election's over. And the objectors need to stop meddling with the primal forces of our democracy here. They need to stop it. Like, there is a cost. They think they're just having a protest debate and they can get away with it because it's not actually going to overturn the election. Well, now we're seeing the cost of that play out in real time. And if we don't think other countries around the world are watching this happen right now, if we don't think the Chinese Communist Party is sitting back and laughing, then we're deluding ourselves. So call it off, Mr. President. We need you to call this off. And let me just uh, re remind and reinforce to our viewers, you are a, a loyal conservative Republican. You represent a district in, in Wisconsin uh, that Trump won. And, and uh, you're a supporter of his, but you're just acknowledging the reality that he lost. What do you want him to do? Because he has not, 
he could go to Twitter right now and say, please, you know, go to the mall or please protest peacefully, please get out of the Capitol, but he's not doing it. What would you want him to do, Congressman? Yeah, this will be the first time in the last four years I'm encouraging him to tweet. But go to Twitter and say, it's over, please go home, thank you for your support, I support the peaceful transition of power. Congressman, you uh, went to Iraq, as you note, uh, to help that country, uh, to try to bring democracy to that country. What goes through your mind when you see these images here of people actually, Americans, some of your colleagues in the House who also served, by the way, uh, actually trying to stop democracy? I don't understand it. I really... Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's easy to get lost in a maze of of constitutional abstract arguments when common sense suggests that what we're doing here has no constitutional basis. And also, think how messed up it is to give thousands of people false hope that you can somehow change the result of an election. Uh, and, and right now, we're seeing the consequence of that. And, and someone said earlier, I was listening to your program, that you know Republicans are fond of saying we're a nation of, of laws, not men. Well, that's true in part, but we are a nation of free people, and free people need to govern themselves long before they encounter any law. It's that that holds the country together more than any law. And so there may not be any law against what the objectors are trying to do, but there are serious consequences every time we break an unwritten rule, a norm in this country. It is harder to repair than any statute or any statute. There are costs to what is happening right now. I want to bring in uh, one of your colleagues, uh, a, a fellow uh, Midwestern Republican and a, fe a fellow uh, veteran, uh, Congressman Adam Kinzinger. Uh, Congressman, where are you? Are you okay? Are you safe? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I, I won't give my uh, specific location. I, I'm good. And, uh, you know, this is uh, disgusting. And I, you know, second, you know, everything that Mike just said. He, he's right on. The, um, the fact, the fact is, and, and you've been you've been making this point very vocally, Congressman Kinzinger. The, the fact is that President Trump unleashed this. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, look, you know, all you have to do, and, and I know you you look at Twitter too to see what, what's going on, and and you see these people that now start calling this thing, you know, equivalent to 1776. I mean, I was seeing this for weeks. That's why I, for weeks, have warned that there was going to be violence on January 6th. You give people false hope. You have leaders that are un, that do not have the courage to tell people the truth, which is that Congress cannot just come in and on its own whim make a happy wish of who's president. And when you don't have the courage as a leader to tell people the truth, you end up getting people that believe the conspiracies and the false truth, and you get a capital storm like today. This is absolutely, utterly despicable, and every single Republican leader has got to call this out forcefully and be held accountable. Congressman Ken Kinzinger, your, your, your fellow uh, veteran and, and fellow Midwestern Republican, Congressman Gallagher, said that he, uh, he hasn't seen anything like this since he was in Iraq. Well, what about you? Yeah, I, same thing. I mean, this, this is something that, you know, you guys would be covering right now if it was happening maybe in Belarus or, you know, anywhere else around the globe. Uh, anywhere else around the globe, we would call this a coup attempt. That's what I think it is. And, uh, but have no fear, the guardrails of democracy and the Constitution will hold, and we will succeed. And I think when this is over, we'll look back and realize where this cancer has come from and, uh, and go after it. Uh, Congressman, uh, President Trump uh, tweeted, quote, I'm asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful, no violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order, respect the law, and our great men and women in blue, thank you. Unquote. Is that enough, Congressman Kinzinger? No. I mean, that's, that's cowardice. Cowardice is, you know, is trying to just say, oh, we want you to be peaceful. We want you. He needs to stand up and say, I lost the election. Let the count go ahead. The conspiracies I've been spewing out are false, period. And this is not 1776. And the Pentagon needs to do everything that is requested in terms of the deployment of the National Guard, et cetera, to restore order to the people's house, because that is what makes us different than so many failed countries that we look at all around the globe.